This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Fire Brigade observes the Fire and the Life Safety Week. The Jamaica Fire Brigade will be hosting a slew of activities, utilizing traditional and the social media to commensurate the 25th year of Fire and the Life Safety Awareness Week and is encouraging citizens to participate. The week is being observed from October 24 to 30 under the team empowering citizens to create fire safe communities. Speaking at a Jamaica Information Service Think Tank today, JFB Commissioner Stuart Beckford said that at this time of the year during Fire and Life Safety Week, we intensify our public relations and the media campaign to educate and to advise Jamaicans of tips that they can adopt to make their surroundings safe from fires. He noted that the JFB is celebrating 150 years of existence and the service to the people of Jamaica. Public Relations Officer of the JFB, Emilio Ibanks, who also addressed the session, said that due to the pandemic, most of the FLSEW activities will be done virtually. We started the week with a church service which was live streamed on our social media platforms. We'll be collaborating with the schools and the communities and using all the virtual spaces that we can to ensure that the message of fire safety reaches the public. And of course, this year being our 150th year, we are going larger than large, Ibanks said. In outlining the activities for the week, he shared that social media engagement has already started through the JFB Instagram jingle and poster competitions, which close on October 22, with the winners to be announced shortly. Ibanks noted that there will also be Allen wide virtual town hall meetings targeting community members. A virtual university forum will be held on Wednesday, October 27, covering the topics of events, permits, and the aftermath of fires. The main thing behind the virtual university forum is to ensure that persons at the university level who will be heading out there into the working world, especially those who are going into the built environment, have a basic understanding of how we operate at the JFB. As you know, building plans come through the fire brigade for certification before persons can go out there and start building. We want to start the education of these individuals at this level to make sure that they understand the codes that we abide by, Ibanks explained. He said the JFB is committed to sensitizing citizens, especially as they spend more time indoors due to the pandemic because statistics and history have shown that there is increased risk of fires when more people are at home. Ibanks said that people interested in participating in fire and life safety awareness activities may engage with the JFB through its Facebook and Instagram social media pages. Called a pastor was moved in interest of justice, wouldn't get fair trial in Mobe, DPP says. Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn said a call to Pastor Kevin Smith was being transported to Kingston yesterday in the interest of justice. Smith and a police constable Arlando Irons of the Montego Bay Fugitive Apprehension Team were killed in an accident along the Bogwalk Bypass. Two other policemen traveling with them in an unmarked unit have been hospitalized. Even though the alleged crimes for which Smith and his two co-accused are being held occurred in Montego Bay, St. James, Llewellyn told the news that the pastor might not get a fair trial in the second city. The essential criterion for a trial is fairness to all parties. In this case, a part of the allegations would be that this was a gentleman of great influence through his church. The potential witnesses are persons who belong to his church. The allegations would have excited and provoked the passion of a lot of members of the public within the St. James area and the wider community, Llewellyn said. The potential jurors to try the case against him would have been drawn from the same community, so these potential jurors would either have been persons who would have either already been prejudiced against him or for him, prejudiced against the potential witnesses or for the potential witnesses. She said, given the nature of the allegations, which seems to have shocked the public, a consideration of the interest of justice not only has to look at the process the accused, the victims and the witnesses, but also how quickly the matter would have been able to move through the court system. 
we would have been getting information from the police about what they would have been seeing on the ground, such as the fear factor and the intimidation of potential witnesses. We have been getting that information on the ground, so all that ties into your assessment of whether the accused could really get a fair trial in St. James and whether the witnesses or the victims would have been able to participate in a trial, she revealed. She said under the Constitution, the DPP has the power to, among other things, initiate prosecutions straight and move the case to another area. She said this is not done often, as it depends on the circumstances, but it has been done before. Kingston and the St. Andrew would have been the largest jury pool, and it would have been hardly likely that you would have possible jurors or persons who would have been relatives of members of his church or would have had passions inflamed one way or another. You would have a better likelihood that objective persons would be able to participate in the trial, she said. Llewellyn offered condolences to family, friends, and colleagues of the deceased men. She wished a speedy recovery to the injured cops. Mandeville Hospital continues to receive support from corporate Jamaica. With a recent donation of five cylinders complete with regulators and oxygen, one portable cylinder 1,000 KN95 mask, and 1,000 bottles of water, the Mandeville Regional Hospital in Manchester continue to receive support from corporate Jamaica. According to the Southern Regional Health Authority, the donation was made by Wind Farm Company, BMR Wind Jamaica Limited, to strengthen the hospital's fight against COVID-19. Regional Director of the SRHA, Michael Bent, thanked the company for their continuous support of healthcare in southern Jamaica. The support that we have been receiving from corporate Jamaica and the Jamaicans has been heartwarming and we thank BMR Jamaica for coming on board once more. BMR Jamaica continues to demonstrate an exemplary corporate social responsibility and we laud them for their donation and support to the services we offer, Bent said. The regional director noted that the donation will help to ease some of the pressure that the hospital has been facing with the recent increase of COVID-19 patients. Meanwhile, regional director of BMR Wind Jamaica, Ava Tomlin, said the company will continue its commitment to strengthen education, community and the safety in Jamaica. We all have to pull together to get our country back on track, and to do so, we need to ensure it's the greatest asset our people are healthy and productive. BMR Jamaica operates a major wind farm in Post Dam Malvern, St. Elizabeth, generating energy for the national electricity grid. Crown Witness says he turned on gang to help Jamaica. The attorney for Andre Blackman Bryan, the accused leader of the Fared Klansman gang, yesterday painted the Crown's key witness as a lying desperado who turned a prosecution witness to escape facing the music for his own role in the St. Catherine Base gang. Confronting witness two yesterday afternoon, after the Crown had wrapped up its evidence in chief from him, attorney Lloyd McFarlane posited that the self-styled businessman who had been freed of the charges against him for being part of a criminal organization when arrested in 2018 with other gang members had offered evidence against them in order to have the case against him dismissed. That assertion, however, was hotly rejected by the witness, who maintained that his decision to testify was because he wanted to help Jamaica. You gave statements to the police in January 2020. Were you doing it so that your case would be dismissed, McFarlane pressed? No, sir, replied the witness, who first took the stand in September. Why were you, McFarlane quizzed? Because I didn't want to waste the court's time, the witness replied. Asked whether he knew that by implicating Brian in his statements, it would help him, the witness said he had no vendetta against Brian, pointing out that he had spoken about all the gang members. Thirty-two men and a woman are before the court, facing various charges on the Jamaica's anti-gang legislation and the Firearms Act. On the further questioning from McFarlane, who insisted that his motive for testifying against the gang members was purely selfish, the witness said, I was only doing the right thing, sir. For yourself, McFarlane shot back, to which the witness replied for everybody in the country for all of Spanish town. McFarlane further took the witness to task over his indications to the court 
that Brian had issued orders to other gang members to kill several individuals which were carried out. I suggested to you Blackman gave none of those orders to kill those people. All those stories you have told are not true, McFarlane said, going on to also put question marks on aspects of the witness testimony relating to the collection of extortion money by the supposed gangsters in Spanish town. All of them are true, sir, the witness maintained. Taken to task by McFarlane over aspects of his testimony that the lawyer said were not in sync with statements he had given to the police in 2020, the witness insisted that he had not lied but had only been nervous as that was his first time giving a statement to the police. Said McFarlane, you are a liar and sometimes your lies catch up with you. I am not a liar, sir. Don't say lawyers tell lies too, sir? The witness sassed back. Don't bring lawyers into it, McFarlane thundered. I don't tell lies, the witness stated, making an allowance that his memory might have lapsed in some instances. He, however, maintained that he had not lied under oath, but had simply gone into more detail with his testimony than in his statement to the police. I came here and I swear on the Bible to tell the truth. As I said, I was nervous talking to the police for the first time. I never went down into details, the witness said, noting that he had not mentioned some aspects referred to by McFarlane from his statement because he wasn't asked. I am putting it to you that the accounts you have given about all these incidents are not true. I am suggesting to you that you have lied about Andre Blackman Bryan, given all these different instructions, and so on because you were doing it to save yourself, McFarlane ended. All the incidents I have given are true, sir. I went down into details and I said exactly what happened, sir. I don't tell no lie on Andre Bryan, sir. Andre Bryan is the leader of the gang, insisted the witness, who yesterday told the court that he, the witness, was from an upscale community with some of the best neighbors and the powerful people. All 33 accused who are being tried under an indictment containing 25 counts when arraigned on September 20 at the start of the trial pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. The offenses for which they are being charged include being part of a criminal organization, murder, conspiracy to murder, arson, illegal possession of firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition. Bran is charged with, among other things, being the leader of a criminal organization, Klansman Wandon Gang. Witness number two, who is one of two key witnesses among 42 that the prosecution intends to call, has been testifying in courtroom number one of the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston before Chief Justice Brian Sykes. He has claimed to be the gang's banker and the brand's personal driver, among other things. All monies collected, he claimed, were stashed in his refrigerator at his swanky home and was used to buy gun and gunshot and to pay lawyer fee as well as for food payment for rental cars and to give to members of the gang who made their request for funds through Brian. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.